Welcome back friends, thanks for being here. This is Steve, and we've got a Commodore 128 power supply to fix, and a camera mount, because in the last one we broke the camera mount. I don't know what we were doing. Check this thing out here too. I don't have to say those things anymore. Stick around. And my camera mount broke. So I took it apart, and I'm gonna fix it. This is a Sig Sit. It's a piece of junk you get off of Amazon. And uh, I'll link below so you can see what it was and how much I paid for it. And I got exactly what I paid for. Um, what happened was this little, I don't know if you can get enough light on that. This little plastic piece here cracked and doesn't hold any tension anymore. So you can open that right up. And since it doesn't hold any tension anymore, the camera flops all around on the gimbal, on the link, on the whatever, whatever. So that's all trash. However, it was held in place by these little metal clamping devices and this little bolt through the clamping devices into this wing nut. And the camera mount is just a standard thread nut and bolt combination. So I went out and got a standard thread nut and bolt combination. I'm gonna put this thing back together. And to make matters even more fun, I'm gonna take this little soft angle holding device and spin that thing on there too. And when we're done, you won't even know that it's been fixed. get that out of the way, put that on, put that on, put that in place, Is one of those sides square? No, they're both round. So this is what you would consider to be like a carriage bolt. There's a little shoulder on the top side of the bolt that locks into place there, but it, the shoulder goes through far enough to come in contact with these holes in the clamp, but there's no square notch in the clamp. So it doesn't matter. And it went in so much easier the last time. There it is. Put the washer on. Put the wing nut on. Put the lock on and get rid of the junk. I will properly recycle this. And I don't need this nut anymore. So I'll put that back in the garage with all the rest of the parts. And there is one repaired camera mount. Back to filming. Okay, Ugh. what we have here is a five volt power supply well, what we have here is a 9 volt power supply with no 5 volts. So we got to get in here and get that fixed. And this thing uses torque screws. I gotta go get a torque screwdriver. I'll be right back. Okay, back from the garage and now I have debranded tools with R branded accessories. I think that should be illegal in most states. And this is a Commodore 128 power supply with Torque screws in it. Is that where Compact got the idea from? And yes, using an impact driver to remove screws from plastic is overkill. I totally agree. But it's what I got, so it's what I use. And of course, it opens the other way. Oh 
Why isn't that a pain? The fuse holder is screwed and glued. So we will undo, as soon as the soldering iron warms up, we will undo these wires, because that'll be easier to undo and redo. And then watch me later on in the video where I forget to resolder these wires and then wonder why the whole thing doesn't work. Put a little bit of fresh soldering, a little bit of fresh solder on the tip. Get that tip nice and clean so it conducts heat better. Put some more fresh solder on it. Some tough old solder. This old stuff doesn't want to melt at all. It looks like they might have tied it in a knot. Let's warm up the other desoldering iron and get some of this liquid out of the way so we can see. All right, that's done. And I would warn you guys to not work inside of power supplies unless you know what you're doing. But I don't know what I'm doing, so don't take any of my advice. Luckily, this thing is not potted, so it's actually something you can service, potentially. There's a little fuse in there. Find my meter, and let's see if we can get the fuse tested out. So if the fuse is good, it'll beep like that. And they've got written on the circuit board in great big letters that that is a 125 volt 4 amp fuse. And yet it's almost completely unserviceable to get to. And that fuse is definitely dead. So let's work that thing out of there. Taking full note of how much more difficult it's going to be to get it back in. Alright, we got it out. Yep, completely dead. Alright, let's go raid the supplies bin and see if I got a fuse this size. Okay, so what I have in stock is a 250 volt 4 amp fuse. And Uncle Google and Cousin Quora and my friend Mojo Tony I'll say that you can up the voltage, but not up the amperage in a circuit like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and shove it in there and see what happens. It's funny to me that there is an internal fuse that you can't reach while there is an external fuse that is user replaceable. Whatever, man. All right, so this is gonna be fun to get in there. Let's see what we can do. One side in, the other side in, okay. So do we go for broke and solder the wires back onto the external fuse and see what's up? Capacitors all look pretty good. Overall, the construction is pretty nice. I like it. Soldering skills could use some uh, improvement. And coming from me, that's saying a lot. Looks like there's some filter caps in there, a couple of voltage regulators, a couple of toroids. All right, I'm gonna put it back together and we'll see what happens from there. I'm gonna be a little bit nicer to the next guy coming along and only solder the wire to the eyelet, not tie a knot on it. If you're working on this thing so rough that you need strain relief when taking the case off, you probably have other issues. You might need to take those up somewhere else. One down. Put some solder on the landing zone. All right, let's check our work before we put it back together. That's good. Let's get in there and check that fuse. I mean, I checked it before I put it in, but 
I'm here. Might as well check it after I put it in also. All right, she's a good one. Let's get her back together. That wire goes in there. That wire goes in there. Right. Screws back in. And these are self-tapping screws going into plastic. So what we're gonna do is back them out by hand until they set. There you go. Get them started. Set. Started. Set. Started. Set. Started. And if you don't do that, what will happen is you will just cut new threads into the plastic. And then I will run nice and slow. So as not to break anything. Okay, let's get it tested out. Well, it didn't smoke when we plugged it in. That's a good start. No weird noises coming out. No excessive heat. No funky smells. And on the back side of this power supply, we have a pinout diagram that says the center, center pin and the upper left. Is nine volts AC. And my cable is nice and crooked. So let's check my ability to knock this thing over, over and over again. Let's check, get that somewhere where I can see it. And that looked like 10. 10.38 and then 9 volts and ground are the two pins on the right side. The ground is also supposed to be the outside. So let's try that first. 5 volts is also supposed to be the outside. 5.17. We are good to go. Let's all right. Uh, she's all fixed. Let's get this sticker off of here. And in the next one, we will plug in the 128 and see if it works and do what is needed to be done. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being awesome.